I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Rich Daniels, a fractional general counsel who helps small and medium-sized businesses mitigate their legal risk, allowing them to concentrate on their core business. Rich is based in Ladera Ranch, California. Welcome, Rich. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for having me today. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. You've left the corporate executive world to build your own business to secure your income, savor your independence, and succeed on your terms. But you have to get past the struggles of acquiring clients, building a pipeline, and getting paid what you're worth. In this podcast, Jay Kingley, the CEO of Maven, and his guests share their best practices, tips, and tricks on how you can get out of Struggle City and into Success City and beyond. Enjoy today's episode. Rich, I'm the CEO of a $30 million company that sells software that helps businesses manage their logistics and delivery. We bump into each other for the first time at a business networking event. You've got a maximum of 60 seconds to give me your elevator pitch Hi, Jay. Great to meet you. I know in your business, you probably encounter certain legal issues. I'm a fractional general counsel. I work with small and medium-sized businesses such as yours, and I help those businesses and help the the business owner save more of the money they they make, mitigate their risk, allow them to work on their business as opposed to be in their business. And most of my clients refer to me as their legal conscience. So I believe I can help you add value increase your revenue, and mitigate any risk you have going forward. So, Rich, dive a little deeper into who your ideal client profile and the areas in the marketplace where you feel you are particularly strong. Well, I think the the, the organization that you just mentioned is probably right in my, my wheelhouse. Five to 50 million in revenue, goods and services. They have a a unique brand. They're trying to scale their business or build their business. And what I do is I come in and I do an evaluation from a legal standpoint and a strategic standpoint and look at their business and and identify potential risks that they may have and then act proactively to handle those risks, getting their contracts cleaned up, whether it's helping develop their brand and their value proposition, whether it's IP related, insurance. If they're looking to raise money, I can help them with that. There's, a, there's just a myriad of issues that I can help an organization handle and encounter and, and just move forward to help build their business and allow them to concentrate on their business while I concentrate on their legal problems or issues. Rich, one of the things I love doing, and I think I'm not alone in this, is I love watching legal and police type shows. And I see those lawyers and I see all the courtroom stuff, not to mention we've got Google Esquire who is a great source for legal advice, not to mention all the chat GPT type services out there that I can ask various legal questions. So why would a client need what you do when they have all this other stuff available to them? Well, that's a, that's a great question, Jay. So the reason is those chat GPT and Google Esquire and all those things they don't know your business. I come in and I learn your business. So I know the eccentricities of your business, the, the details of your business. I don't give you just general legal advice. I give you advice that's customized to your business and to help you with your business. Yes, you can get some of those generic things. And as we all know, there's a lot of issues with AI and chat GTP because it's very generalized. I think you want a personalized uh, advisor and counsel And that's what I bring to the table. So let's say one of the people in your target market, hopefully more than just one, says, Rich, I need to bring you on as my fractional general counsel. Now, what outcomes would those clients expect when they work with you? Well, I think I bring a lot of value in a lot of different ways. I come in and I do a a kind of an audit from a legal perspective of all their different issues, whether it's contracts. Do they have the right insurance? How is their, how are their employment issues being handled? Um, if they have litigation, someone needs to oversee that outside litigation, that outside attorney. In most cases, I would say these companies are spending a lot more than they're, they're getting the value for. So I come in and I do that evaluation 
And I think at the end of the day, they're going to get a lot of value from what I bring to the table. And again, I hate to use the word again, but I'm very proactive. So I prepare them for the inevitable potential uh, litigation matter that comes in so we can handle it quickly and cost effectively. So think about the companies that are right in the sweet spot of those that you like to serve. And, and you just told me that you do legal audits that sort of span the spectrum. But I also know in life, the 80-20 rule always applies. So there's probably 20% of those areas that create 80% of the difficulties. So what areas are those that you find most business owners get wrong? Well, I'll tell you one of the areas that that I'm very surprised that they get wrong because I think it's the the foundation of any business are contracts. Some companies that I've I've encountered either are not working with any contract whatsoever or they they don't know what's in their contract a CEO or a CFO signs a contract without having someone giving them the proper legal advice. So they don't know either their obligations or their rights under those contracts. And I think it's almost more of an 80, 20, maybe 90, 10, because they don't have those contracts in place or, or understand everything about them, that that's when they run into trouble. And I'm assuming that's both ways. That's both the contracts with their customers and the contracts with their vendors and suppliers. Is that fair? Absolutely fair. And and I think it runs the gamut. So do you see that one side tends to be more of a of an issue than the other? In other words, is does most of the problems occur because they don't have the right contracts with their customers, or does most of the contract uh issues occur because they don't understand the contracts that they're signing with their vendors? I think it's the latter. I think these 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 small and medium sized businesses are just looking to do business. And looking to create revenue, and you know that they could be doing that while one they could be leaving money on the table, or two they don't they don't know what rights they can enforce when they have a contract, and so they could be losing money uh, as they move forward with these relationships. So one of the challenges I, I think that we we all have is when we are ignorant. So I'm unaware. I think if you laid it out for someone, they would say, I think being Uh, on my contracts with my vendors and with my customers and understanding what all that means is important. And it's something that is urgent enough, absolutely have it in place. The problem comes when I don't know what I don't know. I'm just bopping along thinking like everything is just fine. What do you see are the struggles that, or the triggers maybe is a better word. What are the triggers? that cause your clients to say, "Uh uh-oh, I didn't see this coming. Now I've got to pay attention. Well, unfortunately, you hit the nail on the head. If they don't have someone like me in place, the problem that they're going to encounter, they're going to get into a dispute, whether that's a lawsuit or at least a dispute with one of their vendors, one of their suppliers, and someone's going to come in and say, well, we have this contract. And they're going to say, like you said, they're unaware. I was not aware of that provision. And at that point, it may be too late. They're in the lawsuit. They're spending a lot of money with other attorneys. Uh, They could be losing money. The the case could go against them because litigation is very uncertain in a lot of respects. There's no such thing as a slam dunk. Even if you have everything in your corner, you could still lose a case. So I think you hit the nail on the head. Being unaware of the situation until something escalates to a problem. And then when that happens, there's a lot of stress, a lot of money involved. A lot of the resources for the core business are taken away from the business to concentrate on the dispute or the litigation and getting that wrapped up. So what is it that they're not really understanding? What what is getting in their way of them saying most businesses at some point have some disputes that the vendor says, hey, you have to do this or you're not allowed to do this. And they say, well, that's not what I believe I agreed to. You know, they have the same thing in the reverse side with their customers. So they they know they have these things, but most of the time, you know, they get by. It's a little bit of drama, but it's not catastrophic. What is it that they're not seeing that if they did see, they would be much more proactive to make sure that it wasn't too late when the legal monster rises up to bite them? 
That's a great question. I think a lot of these business owners or these CEOs, they are experts in their business. They know their business, whatever it may be. They know their product, they know their service, and they know how to de- deliver that to their customers. What they don't know is what are the legal ramifications of getting their product or their service to market? There's a lot of, of hurdles and, and minefields, so to speak, that they, they're just not aware of. And I think it's just a lack of a legal expertise, a legal experience. Um, I've been in a lot of different organizations and a lot of different industries. So I've seen a lot of things that most people, even in those industries, aren't aware of until they rear their ugly heads. So it's just a matter of, you know, experiencing it. And like you said, some of those disputes are very minor, but it does disrupt your business. It could cost some additional money and it could cut into your margins, could cut into your, your overall revenue. So those are things that need to be addressed. And that's why I try to be very proactive with my clients and prepare them for those issues and educate them on, Hey, this could be a, this could be a pitfall. Maybe it never comes to fruition, but if it does, you're prepared for it. Rich. When I first entered into the executive ranks in the corporate world, I was doing a lot of M&A, a lot of business uh, transactions, and I happened to work with an absolutely brilliant attorney who was with our outside counsel. And I want to share one of the things that he told me, because I have to say he did a little bit of mentoring for me, which I will always be grateful And one of the things he said to me was that when it comes to contracts, you negotiate them, you sign them, and you foul them away. And you will never look at that contract again until the relationship goes off the rails. And the minute it goes off the rails, the party that is aggrieved will pull out that contract. And now they are going to read it with the help of their counsel, with a fine tooth comb. And that's when it bites you. And I've never forgotten that. So I've never fallen into the trap of thinking that, well, the deal is done. We've signed the agreement. Everyone's happy. Everyone's fouled it away. So I'm good legally. It's that point of it only gets taken out of the drawer when there's a problem. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of business owners don't understand. I think that's sage advice that you got. I I agree with it 100%. But again, having someone like me at the front end, yes, you may put that contract away and it sits in a file cabinet, but I know and other people in the organization know what that contract says. So when you do pull it out, there's no surprises. And I think that's important. I think that's absolutely what it's really about, that what you think you've agreed to is actually legally what you've agreed to. Mm -hmm. And then you don't worry about it because the day will always come, whether it's a vendor or a customer, when it goes off the rails. Yes. And when you pull out your con, it could be two, three years later. You can have the confidence because you did the right work up front that you are protected in terms of your rights and obligations. And when you don't do that, it will make a business owner rethink why they want to have their own business. When you have done it, you will sleep like a baby at night. 100%. 100%. You're you're right. And and that's why part of of my job, the way I envision it, is that I educate these business people so they know their terms. And and you have a contract like that and – you, like you said, you can sleep well at night because you know it says, and you're, you're in the legal right when it comes to that. Indeed. So what experiences did you have in your career that enabled you to develop these points of view, these insights that you have that, let's just say, most of your fellow attorneys perhaps don't have? Well, I think I think there's two aspects to that. One, I think I was trained very well. I was actually trained as a litigator early in my career. So Part of doing that, you, you're trained to issue spot and find, hey, where are the problems before they become problems? Like anticipation is very big uh, combined with I, I listen very intently so I can listen to a business owner. What problems is he having? Maybe he has a problem with a contract that he wants to change. So I listen very intently. And I think that combination of being able to issue spot and listen well has, has led to my success in my career. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. 
And when we come back, we're going to learn a bit about Rich. You've spent the last 25 or more years working your way up the corporate ladder, achieving success and reward along the way. Whether corporate kicked you to the curb or you walked out the door of your own volition, there is no going back. You're nowhere close to retiring, so you're moving on to your second act as a fractional executive. You're feeling the thrill of freedom mixed with the dread of the unknown. You're not alone. Maven works with the elite 20%, turning the top fractional executive's aspirations into reality easily and quickly. Imagine the right clients needing your genius, chasing you to get it, and happy to pay you for the impact you make. Maven helps you build all aspects of your business to fund your lifestyle without having to work corporate hours. With Maven, market yourself easily, select your clients with purpose, and build a business that leverages your genius on your terms, not on someone else's. Reach out to Jay at j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com. Transform your expertise into a prosperous business where you'll make the impact you want with all the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned. Welcome back. We're talking to Rich Daniels, a fractional general counsel who helps small and medium-sized businesses mitigate their legal risks. Rich, let's find out a bit more about you. And I want to start with what happened in your life, personally or professionally, that most explains why you're doing what you do today? Great question. Thanks, Jay. I don't think there's been one event or one happening, but you know, throughout my life, I, I think I've had friends and, and, and family members and things who've come to me with, with problems, with issues. And again, getting back, you know, I enjoy listening and I really enjoy helping people out helping them find that needle in the haystacks to, to find out what their problem is and, and come up with a resolution. And that's been out throughout my career with all my clients. I've always enjoyed when you tell them something and the light bulb goes on and they hey, I never thought of that. It gives a different perspective. And, and I learn from my clients as well. They know their business. So there's certain things that trigger something in my mind. Have you ever thought of this? And it's all about communication. So I really enjoy communicating. I enjoy people. And again, I, I learn as much from them as, as I think I impart to them as well. Rich, it's one thing to be a great general counsel and clear out all the legal minefields that one of your clients has. It's another thing entirely to build your own business. So what are the big challenges that you've had to overcome and perhaps even are still working on to build your fractional business? Well, I am still working on it. I'm I'm a little over a year into the into the new business and and I'm enjoying it immensely. But one of the things that I that I think lawyers don't always have the best reputation with people as as we all know. And I think I think a lot of business owners put the legal aspect of their business in in the, in the back of the back of the bus. And they they just look at it as a cost. It's a cost that I don't want to be bothered with. The problem is if they don't address things, that cost becomes a lot greater because it becomes escalated, whatever the problem would be, whether it's a litigation matter, whether they don't, they, they don't comply with a, a state law or federal law. So all those things. So it, it's just a matter of imparting to these business owners that they need to be proactive. They need to be cognizant of the legal issues and legal ramifications of their business practices and their business decisions. And getting that across to their business, especially when they're focused on their core business, is a little bit of a hurdle. I'm not adding to their bottom lines, but I am adding a lot of value. And, and if you have those contracts or, or certain issues, you can not only raise your revenue, but you can increase your margins. And that's important to a business. So you're, as you said, uh, about a year in, and let's look a year out. So what's next for you over the coming 12 months? Again, I, I continue to get my message out. I know there's not a lot of people in this space, but the fractional executive is, is an up and coming field. And I think there's a lot of value for all fractional executives that can impart to these small and mid, medium sized businesses. So I'm continuing to build my business. And as we speak, I'm, I'm generating new clients and I want to continue that as a pipeline and, and help as many businesses as I can over the course of the next year. I certainly hope that those in our audience that have their own business are thinking to themselves, maybe I need to get in front of this and make sure I am legally buttoned up. And Richie would be a great resource for them. So what is the best way 
for those folks to reach out and contact you? Well, the best way they can reach me on my email, it's rdaniels at Intrepid Legal Inc. That's the name of my company. And or they can give me a phone call. My number is 661-645-5450. Rich, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcasts on all the major platforms and our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time, make an impact on your clients and family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned. Thank you.